What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing? Hey, good to see you again. It's been a minute. Oh, yeah, I know. How was spring yeah. break? This is awesome. How was yours? Yeah, so we, hey, you guys, we took off last week for spring break, and uh, we came back to this uh, show not even knowing what the hell's going on. Oh, so, sorry about that. So, <laughs> Chief, <laughs> it's a kid show, Chief. <laughs> I know. It is, it is definitely a kid show today, so sorry about that. Yes. So, um, here at the Exchange and Chief Chat, we, we absolutely love the kids, and we got a special treat today for the entire family. So, without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. So you guys, month of the military child is just around the corner. It starts next week, April 1st. And at the exchange, we are already celebrating our youngest heroes with today's Chief Chat guest. He is a number one New York Times bestselling author and a six-time Nickelodeon's Kids' Choice Award winner. He's been named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People and his A Diary of Olympic Kids series, one of the top five best-selling book series of all time has been delighting kids and adults since 2007. His latest book, the third Wimpy Kids spinoff, Rowley Jefferson's Awesome Friendly Spooky Stories, hit shelves this month and it's available at select exchanges and shopmyexchange.com. Please help us welcome Jeff Kinney to Chief Chat. Hey. Hi. Jeff, Jeff, Thank Jeff, you very Jeff. much. I'm excited to be here. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Julie, for that great introduction. And thanks, Chief, for having me on. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. Jeff, we're super excited, but first, just a little quick housekeeping. So everybody who's watching, drop a note in the comments and let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, share your questions and comments with Jeff there in the comment section. We'll read those live. Now is a great time to start your watch party and enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following our page, you should. Chief Chats are every week and we have terrific military exclusive guests lined up all spring. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Uh, and welcome to Chief Chat. I'm doing well. I'm, I'm in the middle of a tour right now. So it's fun. I got to stop over in Las Vegas. We pulled up over and, and I got into this weird room. It's like the back office of a, of a bookstore and it's got like taxidermy forms. There's a bear back there. So I'm in a strange place right now, but yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. So you got a bear with a scarf on. So that's, yeah, I, I haven't seen that. <laughs> it's like you're in a stuff. book right now. <laughs> exactly. Maybe you draw some inspiration from this from this back office that you got going on. I think I will. I think I will. But uh, it's just an honor for you to have to have you with us today, and this means so much to our military children and our families. And uh, kind of like what we were talking before we got on, uh, you're you're like a staple in everybody's household. So uh, every kid that gets some money and goes to a book fair, including my kids, they come back with diary diary of a wimpy kid in some form or fashion. So uh, we, oh, we feel cool. like your family already. So thank you for being <laughs> here. Uh, and, and can you let every, and you you said you're uh, calling in from Las Vegas, and you're just making a road trip. It, it, what's yeah. I'm in the middle of a road trip. I'm, I've got this new book out, Rowley's Spooky Stories, and I'm and, and I'm in a van with my son, who's 18 years old, and a few of my employees, and we are going across. It's basically from Colorado to Utah to Wyoming, Arizona, Nevada. Um, so it's really exciting. Like we're we're trying to do as much as you can in this in this world, right? Yeah. Um, and there's it. It's, it's tough for kids right now because so much that's canceled. This is a year for kids, you know, being in masks and, and not being able to see their friends the way they like to. Um, so we're trying to do something physical, you know, because the kids are seeing a lot of this, right? A lot of our, our faces, we've been trying to entertain them, but it's also important to do something uh, physical. And so we're doing these drive-through events where my, my uh, drive-through events, like a spooky kind of situation. So people in their cars all stay in their cars with their masks on they go through this almost like an outdoor haunted house and then at the end i'm dressed up as a grave digger and i hand uh, <laughs> books off with a grave digger shovel so that's what we're, that's what we're out here that's awesome, awesome oh wow i love that yeah, yeah it looks pretty really... spooky where you're at right now too so just <laughs> <laughs> i might have to take some of these things with me Congratulations on your new book, Rowley Jefferson's Awesome Friendly Spooky Stories. So tell us a little bit about the spinoff series, which focuses on Rowley, who is the happy sidekick to Greg Hethley in your Wimpy Kid books. And so what is Rowley up to in this new adventure? 
That's right. He is a happy kid. He's um, he he's he's writing scary stories, which is a weird thing because Rowley is Greg is like I was as a kid. He's a, a kid who's um, who always wants to be a little bit older, stay up a little later, see the PG thirteen movie, and then eventually mm -hmm. the R rated movie. You know, like it, I I wanted to grow up. You know, I had older siblings, and Rowley is like a pure kid. He he likes to he likes to be a kid. That's the way the way that I wish I was as a kid. Um, so it's fun, this challenge of writing spooky stories from Rowley Jefferson because he's a very innocent kid. So the stories end up getting a little bit messed up. Um, like for example, there's a story where there, there are zombies, there's a zombie invasion in the city. You know, they don't know what to do because they're gonna get overrun by zombies. So they let the zombies in. And so then it ends up being a story of like <laughs> zombies and humans living together in harmony. You know, so all of the stories have this kind of innocent uh, flavor to them. Awesome. So Jeff, Spooky Stories is your third release since the pandemic began. Uh, you released Rally Jefferson's Awesome Friendly Adventure in August and Diary of a Wimpy Kid number 15, The Deep End, launched in October. Um, you talked a little bit about how you've been able to reach your fans, uh, the young fans, despite the challenges of the pandemic. So um, can you share a little more about how you've handled these book tours and then what um, what do you have for promoting spooky stories? Sure. Um, so we started with, uh, you're right, I, I've released this as my third book during a pandemic, so maybe I don't have the best timing. Um, <laughs> the, the first book, the, the first rally book that I released during this time was called Rally Jefferson's Awesome Friendly Adventure. And I decided that was, we actually had to delay the book. It was supposed to come out around, you know, in April of last year. So we delayed it because of the pandemic. And then we delayed it to August. So I got out there, I got a van um, and then a, uh, it was a seven foot trident, right? Like a, with a grabber at the end of it. And so what I would do is I'd basically pull over in front of a bookstore and then kids would come by on foot or they would, or families would come by in their cars and I would just hand the book to them with the grabber over and over. And it was funny because I wasn't expecting such a positive response, but people were just so happy to do something um, mm -hmm. that I, I decided to, to keep going with that. And so in, the, in October, we got out there and did something called the Deep End Drive-Through Tour. And this was a really amplified experience. It was like, uh, you know, we were dressed as lifeguards. We had giant like seven foot beach balls. We had an experience where you drove through a tunnel and it felt like you were underwater. And, you know, and at the end, it was just me this time with a pool skimmer handing books off uh, to people as they went by in their cars. Uh, but it was a fun experience. Wow. I think this is actually a great time to be releasing books because, you know, people have picked up the habit or started reading when they didn't have time before. So I think it's fantastic. Yeah, book sales are up, which is good. And of course, we know why that is. is that people mm -hmm. have had more time to read. Um, so that's, uh, but it's hard for independent bookstores right now. You know, it, my, my bookstore lost a lot of money, uh, during the pandemic, you know, and of course it's not over yet, but it is hard. It's important for people to support their independent bookstores and, you know, and go to the exchange and, and get your book, your books there as well. Um, so, you know, anywhere books can be found in physical locations, it's really important to support those places. I think it's real cool how you are uh, kind of thinking outside the box on how you how you're releasing your your books or or, or reaching your your, the, your fans and and just the different themes that you have. I think that's pretty cool as well to to, to match yeah. the books that are coming out. Yeah, you know, it's in a way it's kind of a selfish act because I I write the books in isolation. You know, these two of these books I wrote at the cemetery literally because once my kids came home and started doing remote learning. I needed a place to be that was quiet. So I would drive to the cemetery. I'd sit there the whole day and write, write jokes, you know? And so it's weird to write and then to not meet the kids who are reading the books. So I decided to get out there. We figure out a way that we, we feel that it's very safe. It's safer than a McDonald's drive through I think. Um, so I, but I think it's important to connect for me and for the readers to be able, for us to at least be able to look each other in the eye and to make that connection is really important. Yeah, well, that's funny you say that because I, I run away from my kids uh, to, to do the interview. So uh, <laughs> they're they're at home doing school, uh, and I just like you know what? Let me go to the office and do the interview. Yeah, so, good call. That's awesome. But uh, 
we I get the awesome opportunity to introduce a, a fan to you today. Uh, we have a military child with us today. Her name is Mariah. And so yeah. Mariah is eight years old and in the third grade. Uh, she, and, she and her mom, Helena, are joining us from Fort Knox, Tennessee. Awesome. And the, the cool thing is, is so Mar Mariah's dad is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Alphonse Rideau. He's, he's actually one of our teammates here at AFES. Uh, he's a Lieutenant Colonel in the Army, uh, stationed here at, at, uh, in Dallas, and he's one of our program managers. So uh, Mariah, are you, you there? Yes. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Mariah? Uh, I'm doing good, thank you. Well, well, listen, the floor is all yours, ma'am. Thank you. So, I have a question for you. Um, how do you come up with your story ideas for Greg and Rally? And which character are you most like? That's a great question, Mariah. Um, I'll say first that the character I'm most like is Greg, unfortunately, because he's not always a heroic character. You know, he makes mistakes. Uh, I wish I was more like Rowley. How I come up with my ideas, it's sort of complicated, actually. In the old days, I would just take things, take all the funny things that happened to me as a kid, and, and I would remember them, right? I'm a grown person now, but uh, I would take all the memories I had and then start writing, you know, I wrote them all down. It took me four years to clear out everything that I could remember. After that, I had to use my imagination. So these days I do a lot of thinking. I just think and imagine funny situations instead of remember funny situations. It's a great question. That was a great question, Mariah. Good job. <laughs> so Jeff, why is it so important to foster a love of reading at a young age? And what tips do you have for encouraging reading among our young people? I actually, I don't think reading is important at all. I think play as many video games as you can. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um, <laughs> what is he talking about? <laughs> I think my kids already, my kids already took that advice. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of Fortnite, right? Um, I, I think that reading, I, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Reading makes your life better. It makes, your, it makes you enjoy your life more. Um, because if you're curious about the world, you'll be you'll be smarter, of course, and, and things will just be more fun overall. And the thing I realized just recently is that reading actually makes you much more interesting to be around, right? If you if you've had lots of experiences in life, or if you've read about a lot of things, um, it makes you an interesting person, and that makes it easier. Uh, Mariah, when you're older, to get a date, <laughs> to get <laughs> to have good conversation with your friends, to be funny. You know, all these things, like if you've read, the, the thing about reading that's so different about anything else is that it builds empathy, right? And I know we have a lot of kids who are watching who might, might not know what empathy means, but empathy means being able to feel for somebody else, right? To be able to care about somebody else who maybe you don't even know. And so when you read a book who has a character really different from you, it helps you to understand um, where they're coming from. And we need a lot more of that connection. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit. I read a book by a, a woman named Jenny Yang. And she grew up as a, uh, she's a first generation uh, Chinese immigrant, right? And she came to the United States and her, her life was that she was um, basically running a hotel, a motel when she was like nine years old, right? And with her family. And I, it, I didn't have that experience at all. But, you know, growing up, I was like a middle class kind of guy. My dad was in the Navy, but I didn't, you know, I didn't grow up running a motel when I was nine years old. And I wasn't a first you know, generation immigrant either. So by reading her story, I really learned what it was like to be her. And, and I think that's so important. And another thing I'll just say, I'll just throw out there. I know this is the longest answer ever. Ever <laughs> is that here, here I am, a, a, you know, a white man, and I'm writing my stories, uh, writing about the experiences I had as a kid. And there need to be so many more stories, you know, from people of all sorts of different flavors across the spectrum, because the, you know, there need to be, you know, a lot, a lot more stories by people who don't look like me, just to be frank, um, because we need to hear from everybody and to hear everybody's story. So whenever I talk to kids, I always say, please write down your story because we need to hear your story. 
Oh man, that's excellent. Excellent advice. Um, excellent perspective. And uh, I, 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 I don't think I've, I've heard somebody kind of explain reading in that, in that way. So I think that was much needed to, uh, a lot of people need to hear, hear that. So that's awesome. So thank you for that. And, and for me personally, uh, I think Mariah's got a, a good future in podcasting because because <laughs> nobody wants to hear me talk. So Mariah, you got another question? I'm, I'm going to pass it over to you. Okay. So um, I have a question and it's kind of like you have to remember it. So um what did you read when you were my age? Ah, good question. I, I read, I, I liked reading stories by a person named Judy Bloom, right? And most of the grown ups on this call will remember stories by Judy Bloom. She wrote a book called Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing. She wrote a book called Freckle Juice, one called Blubber. Um, and her stories really spoke to me because I could see myself in the characters, right? The things that the characters were experiencing were similar to the things that I was experiencing. And they, they were interesting. They weren't stories like Harry Potter, you know, this is a kid who, who is, the, you know, is, a, is a wizard and all this kind of stuff that's really magical. These stories were very small in a way, right? They were, they were real life stories. And that is something I've really learned about reading is that there are books that are mirrors and there are books that are windows, right? And so mirrors are books where you can see yourself, right? And so for that was a good kind of situation for me because I was reading about a kid just like me, right? But books that are mirror, windows help you see life through somebody else's eyes. And I'd say Harry Potter is like that. I'm getting to imagine what it's like to be a wizard, right? But I think it's both yeah, I think it's really important for you, Mariah, to find books that are both, right? And to find books that represent you as a person and so that you can see yourself. It's important. It's also really important to see yourself in books because it's very validating. You know, you, you need to, it, you know, it, it, it teaches you about yourself. And then I think it's also important to read books about, say, a kid growing up in Tanzania who has water challenges, for exa example. You know, I think it's really important to read both types of books. Excellent. Um, so Jeff, anything special on your must read list um, during the pandemic? Anything interesting you've read? Yeah, Three Keys by Jenny Yang. I, I like that a lot. I liked um, uh, Jean Yang has a book called Dragon Hoops, which is really good, which is about a high school uh, basketball team. And I could go on and on. Um, we've had so many authors um, do virtual visits with us. And, and of course, now I won't be able to think of the great books that they wrote. <laughs> um, but I, I, you know, I, I just I've gotten to read all sorts of different types of books because of this, uh, because we're doing virtual events ourselves. So it's been uh, it's been really cool. Awesome. So you, you talked about uh, your bookstore and how it, unfortunately it kind of lost money during the pandemic. Uh, but uh, can you can you kind of tell us about uh, your bookstore? It's called an Unlikely Story and an Unlikely Story. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's can you? An yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about how that came about? Yeah, we live in this little town called Plainville, Massachusetts, and it was at the center of the town was a building that was kind of rotting. It was uh, it, it was built in 1856 or something like that. And it was on its very last legs. It was abandoned for 17 years. And so we bought it, tore it down, and then built something new in its place. And I just think it's really important to have like a bookstore at the nerve center, as the nerve center of the community. Um, something that's really interesting. I've been on, a, an, I used to work as a lifeguard on a number of, um, you know, Air Force and Army bases in the U.S. And uh, the exchange is part of, you know, is part of the nerve center of the community. And there are other, you know, institutional structures that are really important, like the, the pool and things like that. And, and the army, you know, has, has really recognized that. Like it's, it's especially because kids, kids move around from place to place. It's really important to know, hey, I'm going to move to this new place, but I know where the pool is going to be and I know where the exchange is going to be. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, for us in a community like Plainville, that's not a part of an army base it's important to kind of create a structure and create something 
that is a gathering place for people. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That, that's that is that's a good point, and, and and thank you for the plugs too as well, because we 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 <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> we used to do all our shopping. We go in there every uh, every week and do all our grocery shopping on the on the base, you know, uh, because my dad was in the Navy, you know, so we could, we had that privilege. Awesome. So then you understand um, what it's like to be a military child and. April, which is the month of the military child, is just around the corner. And you know, military children, they go through so much, multiple moves, they switch schools, their parents deploy. Through it all, they remain resilient. And so what words of hope or inspiration can you share with the military children who are watching with us today? That's right. Resilient is a good word. And, you know, every kid that goes through that military lifestyle, and my, my mother really did. She moved to Italy and Japan and everywhere. You're right, resilient is a good word. And, and that means that you have kind of the strength and the knowledge to, to get through a lot of challenges later on. So all of this moving around, uh, you're making friendships that you'll, you'll rely on later on in life. Um, and and uh, you know, it's hard to move. It's, I didn't move as a kid, uh, I stayed in one place. Uh, but I can see that those kids who moved around, they have to adapt, right? You have to be able to make friends quickly. And, uh, and and you're all in the same boat, right? So I would say that the that the challenge of today is the pandemic, right? Is that we've all been robbed of a year of normal interactions. But all the stuff that we've learned about ourselves and all all the stuff we've learned about technology, the way we're connecting right now, you know, maybe this wasn't really here in this way a year ago. So at times of at, at, you know, it's funny during peaceful times. Um, you know, things don't change that much, but at times of great challenge, like war or a pandemic or something like that, things really accelerate. Human beings learn a lot and they really advance in technology and the way they interact with each other. So this, you know, I hope to God that everybody listening hasn't had direct, you know, family tra uh, tra trauma or tragedy because of the pandemic, um, you know, it, but this will teach us to be better at the way that we treat each other the way that we interact with one another. And when we come up for air, when we get outside and take off our masks, life will be a lot better. Absolutely. And, and I just want to also kind of, you know, to piggyback on what you said uh, with the military kids, man, they, they are like the sole reason why we do what we do. Uh, for, yeah. for, you know, they, you know, a lot of us that are in the military, we, we are there to, to set up uh, a, a structure for our family. And our yeah. our kids and our and our, and our spouses, uh, man, they they're the ones that kind of keep us going on a day to day basis. So, a big salute out there to all the military children out there. Um, we we absolutely uh, do this so you guys can can live a better life than we've ever lived uh, growing up. So, uh, just wanted to throw that out there. That kind of inspired me to say that. Absolutely agree. And Jeff, uh, we have service members and military families watching from all over the world right now. So we just want to pause for a moment and share some of that feedback from the live okay. feed. So um, <clears throat> Frank and Mary are watching from Marine Corps Base Hawaii. They say, who is your favorite character that you've ever created? Hmm. That would be Raleigh Jefferson, who's Greg's best friend, because he's really an innocent kid. He was sort of created as a counterpoint to Greg, a kid that doesn't really want to grow up, who's happy being a kid. And so I, I, I like him. He's not like I was as a kid, but I, you know, I, I've met kids like that. And then, uh, so we have somebody tuning in from Whiteman Air Force Base, that's in Missouri. And then um, Darian is 11 years old old and he says um what inspired you to write books what inspired me I, it was actually failure uh, i wanted to be a newspaper cartoonist but that didn't work out for me nobody liked my stuff so i had to figure out some other way to get, get my cartoons published and so i i worked on diary of wimpy kid for nine years before i i was able to get published um so it, it i had to kind of swerve and go in a different direction i had to be resilient Wow. And then Mandy says, thank you for making awesome books. Is there going to be a 16th? Anything you yeah, can share about that? <laughs> yeah, it'll be a sports book. You know, it's, it's funny because I've been trying to figure out how to write a sports book 
without it being about one sport because like let's say i put a basketball on the cover it's like kids who don't play basketball we say ah, i'm not that interested in that mm-hmm. and so I, I i'm trying to figure out a way to to tell a story of sports without making it too specific so that's what i'm trying to crack right now awesome chief and julie um if i missed any you guys can let me know hmm. I think, um, and then Mandy also says she has all of your Diary of Olympic Kid books. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Big fan. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so you uh, you kind of dropped a, a military exclusive uh, with with with, uh, with her. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, can you tell us uh, what else you're working on? Oh gosh, uh, working on a Disney animated film. So um, it's going to be on oh. Disney Plus. So we'll be able to see Greg and rally in animated form which would be really cool right. and awesome. <clears throat> let's see and hopefully we'll make more of those and that's that's it two two books a year and that keeps me plenty busy right now <laughs> and traveling across the country i'm sure <laughs> yeah yep. it does your fun promotions during the pandemic you're a busy dude wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah very busy right now that's for sure a little too busy but you know it's uh, the, this country gives us a lot of opportunities and I'm, I'm greedy for those opportunities, right? It's, I, I feel like I, I wish I could live forever and, and just do a little bit of everything. Well, your new book, Rally Jefferson's Awesome Friendly Spooky Stories, it's available at shopmyexchange.com. So Jeff, can you remind us where can viewers go to learn more about the book and keep up with you? Well, they can go to Wimpy Kid or go to Wimpy Kid, at, at Wimpy Kid on Twitter. I, I don't know my Instagram hang, handle, but it's probably <laughs> Diary of a Secret <laughs> Kid. So, um, you know, those are the places. Eventually, I'll get on Twitter, and, and, and then Mariah and, and kids like her can follow. I, I'm sorry, TikTok. You know, I'm not cool enough for <laughs> TikTok, yet, but I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. So so for me, before we uh, end it, I want to see if Mariah has uh, anything else she wants to say or or you could shout out your TikTok handle too, Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was wondering, um, is is do you have any other places that you have where you think about all of your things that you're going to add into a book? Yeah, besides the cemetery, um, yeah. I have a little. I have a room in my in my studio that's a. Uh, it's almost like a telephone booth from London, right? So if you've ever seen pictures of London, or if you've ever been there, it's like a red box, and so it's like a soundproof room. And I'll go in there. So sometimes that that's where I'll do my writing. So great question, Mariah. Is there anywhere you like to do your homework? Is there anywhere in your in the place where you live that's sort of private that just belongs to you? I would say my bedroom. Your bedroom, good. Yeah, and that's a good place. A bedroom is sort of sacred, right? And I'll get out like maybe a journal to oh. put my homework on so I can focus and not be yeah. distracted by anything else because I get distracted a lot in evening. <laughs> Me too. Me too, Mariah. Me too, Mariah. <laughs> I, I have don't outgrow that at all, Mariah. <laughs> right. I have something called de- attention deficit disorder, so I'm very distractible. Yeah, I understand. Awesome, awesome. Well, man, that was excellent questions, Mariah. And uh, so, Jeff, thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, you you dropped some some jewels on us. <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, we, we talked okay. about some kids. Uh, specific stuff but there's a lot of stuff that probably resonate with a lot of adults out there as well so uh thank you for your perspective um and to the Rideau family uh thank you so much for being a part of chief chat uh we appreciate you mom uh and, and I'll, I'll holler at dad when i when i when i get when he gets off the road but uh thank you yeah. so much for being on the show uh this means a lot to our military parents or our military children our soldiers, our airmen, our guardians, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guard members. So thank you so much, Jeff, for your time. It means a lot to me, too. Thank you very much. It's an honor to speak to, to kids and to military families all over the world. Thank you. Yeah, and thank your dad for, for, uh, for his military service as well. I, I, don't, I don't think I was tracking that he was, uh, he was in the Navy, but uh, thank yeah. him for his service as well. So, Thank you. Awesome. All right. We wish you all the best on your next book. And if you don't mind uh, hanging, hanging uh, 
hanging on for a little bit after the live ends. Uh, I got to get some information from you. All right. And great. Mariah too. Don't hang up yet, Mariah. Yeah, don't hang up yet, Mariah. Thanks. All right. We appreciate y'all. All right, now Chief Chat out. Chief Chat out. Bye.